This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to pick up in part number two on the tower installation at Tiny Fangorn. The tower installation is a Rhone, and it's a 48-tall tower, 48-foot tall. That's what's coming up next this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, it was a nice sunny day, but a little bit windy and a little bit cold. KI4RWO, Ken, our professional tower uh, climber and installer, came down to the property, which I have dubbed Tiny Fangorn, and we got busy. He had some legs created for this tower, and he's uh, installed many of these over the years. This one he liberated from uh, somebody who was getting out of the hobby, and then the tower had sat in a barn for quite a while and looked brand new, really not, uh, not used much. So we had to start breaking ground. We utilized the legs to kind of give us some rough dimensions. We wanted about a yard of concrete, ultimately. So we needed to dig this about a yard wide and height and depth. So King got to work, I was running the camera, but I'm also helping here. With, I'm not trying to take a video to show the, uh, the uh, as we uh, progress uh, digging this hole, but you can see we're da down about a foot at this point, but uh, we, we've got two more feet to go and we're still in topsoil at that point. You can see the dirt is uh, kind of a yellowish brown. We're just starting to break into some of that red clay that we'll see in just a few minutes, sandy clay material. And he's got the breaker bar out. And we found that uh, as you get deeper, this was actually an easier way to actually dig deeper. And then I would get down in the hole and start uh, removing all of the dirt after he's broken it loose with this breaker bar. Now we're down about a foot and a half and you can start to see some of that red clay really starting to come through. Overall, uh, as we're looking at my feet in the hole here, you can kind of see that demarcation line where it's uh, kind of a gray brown and then it turns to red. Doesn't look like this plot of land had actually been used for farming. And the dirt that we've been removing you see now is much redder in color uh, and uh, more clay, but it's also kind of sandy as well. And we started losing light so uh, you can see the uh, sunset here in the background beautiful sunset in middle tennessee and had to turn on the light and we needed to get down about i don't know probably about three or four more inches roughly to get that yard deep ultimately so he's continually breaking some of the dirt and we're having conversations the whole time and getting to know each other a little bit more um, since uh, we don't work together all that often And again, it looks like Ken's doing all the work and in all fairness, he did uh, a lot of the digging, but uh, the breaker bar, he took care of that. He's done this many times. And then I would get down in the hole and remove all of the loose, loose dirt and put it in the pile. Well, this is basically the hole completed at this point. And uh, again, getting later, we're measuring the corners just to see that we're about 36 inches in. I think that one ended up being about 35, 36, somewhere in that ballpark. And we felt, you know, that is a pretty good place to be. So I didn't get a whole lot of good shots because we lost light. So I came back the next morning and that's what's coming up in this next segment. Well, we've got a hole dug as the sun comes up on Tiny Fangorn. Right over there. You can see the tower sections and we have put the uh, legs that we're going to concrete in. And then the hole is approximately 35, 36 inches deep. So about a yard square is what we've got here. And then we got a big pile of dirt. So in fact, the concrete may not actually come up to the surface, but, uh, um, and then we'll put dirt over it, but uh, we'll see. We've got plenty of dirt here and I've got low spots along this fence anyway. And I've got low spots otherwise, otherwhere, <laughs> other places on the property. So this dirt will go to good use, no doubt about it. It's actually decent dirt. It's mostly clay as you can see by the color and uh, the dirt itself as we were digging through hasn't been disturbed. So this dirt right in here hasn't been plowed or anything. So um, I would imagine most of the property that's been cleared 
for equestrian type stuff for the previous owner is uh, never been farmed. But in any event, just wanted to show the hole after completion. Next session, we're going to concrete it in. So, Alrighty, so now that I'm back on another day, Ken and another buddy of ours, Josh, has come out to help us get this first section of the tower into the hole. Now, originally we put these legs on with just a single bolt just to get them off the ground, uh, but we need to add a second bolt. You can buy these legs from Rome. They're not terribly inexpensive, but you can buy uh, the actual legs that they sell. Uh, Ken had these created for me uh, at about half the price, and you can see the little tangs that uh, kind of anchor it in the concrete in addition to just having the legs themselves. Uh, these were about, I think he said they were about uh, 40 inches in length, and we're just attaching both of the bolts to make sure they're properly affixed to the first section of tower. So we're about ready now to stand up this section into the hole, more or less uh, level at this point, but we'll do some additional leveling once we get the concrete in place. And uh, we also had to drill out one of the holes on the tower and the legs to make sure that the bolt would go in correctly. And as we saw just a moment ago, Josh was sitting on about 27 bags of quickcrete 80 pounders. And it looks like Ken's just about done putting those bolts into the legs that he had created. One other thing to mention here is safety. Um, you know, uh, ideally you want to do goggles and when you're working with concrete, uh, if you're not in a well-ventilated area, heck, even if you are in a well-ventilated area, it does help to have actually a mask on when working with concrete. I think uh, because of the, of the windy day and probably because we weren't quite being as safe as we could be, we didn't have any masks on us. And, uh, uh, but ideally, you would want to have masks on when working with concrete. Now, Josh has a recipe that he uses with bags of concrete, and Josh does this for a living, basically. So uh, he's got his jug here that is just the right amount of water for a bag of quickcrete or a similar type of product. So uh, a jug of water goes into the mixer, and then he empties a bag, lets that churn a little bit. Then we'll add another jug of water, and we'll add a second bag. So it's basically a jug of water per bag of concrete. This uh, cement mixer is his. He brought it with him, which was really handy. And we have it running on a lithium battery. We did, I don't have actual power or shoreline power yet at this location. And so we've got about half, well, maybe a third of the bags in the hole at this point. And I'm using a shovel to distribute the concrete in and around the lake. So I am doing work. I'm not actually just running the camera. <laughs> Here's Josh just making sure that uh, we get a good mix. You can actually pour quickcrete right in the hole directly and just pour water on it, but we decided to do a proper mix here and Josh had the equipment, so we took advantage. And then here's Ken operating the mixer, giving Josh a spell. And uh, we're gonna be pouring that into the hole and you can see the number of bags is slowly going down. Here comes the pour. and into the hole it goes. And then I'm gonna use my shuttle to get the uh, remnants off the edge there, and again, distribute it around the legs of the tower. And this is with all of the concrete in place. You can see the legs will stick up a little bit. That's by design. The concrete did not come up to the level of the ground, so we're actually gonna fill that in with dirt, and there'll probably be grass growing around this at some point. I do need to get my mower in here so that I can get some of the higher weeds and thorns out of here. And then this is the next day I was just checking on the curing process and uh, we're basically done with this first section of tower. So now I need to get Ken out here on another good day, hopefully not too cold, to add the other sections. And that's with the dirt in place. And we've had a good rain since then, so this has had a chance to settle in nice and neat. And if we ever need to take the tower down, again, a portion of the legs do stick out. There's the other sections for the next part in our series. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. Thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying the series. Stay tuned. 73.